There is no shame in falling to tear. He is without peer. For now. Seeker, I wanted to tell you. Valhalla keeps sweeping me away to my own adventure in memory. I wondered if it would. That's wonderful. What is it showing you? Some particular events of my wayward youth. But they're in a loop of sorts. Not sure I've quite gleaned what it all amounts to. Then you must do what you do in Valhalla. Keep going. Play a song, brother. It was my daughter's. But I will tell you of it later. Any questions before you get started? I was wondering, actually. Did Odin ever try his hand at Valhalla? Of course. He explored it very thoroughly in seeking to gain control of the Valkyries. But in the end, he found nothing here. You see, Odin always looked outside himself for answers. But Valhalla only revealed its secrets to those who do the work of looking within. Yeah! 
I believe your targets on the battlefield there. Ready to move to the next base, brother. Should be clear.
The flute you found. You said it belonged to your daughter. I carved it for her as a gift. She enjoyed playing and was skilled with it. It was a song she would play. One I used to remember every note of. But no longer. Brother, if you need to recount the story of the day you were tricked into killing your wife and daughter, you don't have to. You've told that story before. We know how it ends. You needn't relive it. Hmm. That's not the story her flute brings to mind, is it? No. Couldn't resist the challenge. Surprise, you hulking brute!
break the tether, quickly! There's Valhalla's talk. Get to it! was here. <laughs> Might want to pick up the pace, unless you want everything to get more difficult. Another weapon, idiot! <laughs>
I think you've met Valhalla's bloodshed quota. Hmm? There is no shame in falling to tear. He is without peer. For now. Secret love. What's the latest on Midgard? Life returns at last. After the Hellwalker desolation was followed by Fimble Winter, I wondered if people would ever come out of hiding, or if there were any left to. But flowers bloom, the sun shines, and it's safe to travel the roads and rivers again. 
No one even seems to mind the giant serpent sunning himself across the mountaintops. Glad to hear it. Jormungandr's a big softy when you get to know him. And now that things aren't quite so desperate, raider attacks have declined. It's progress. Calliope's foot again. Still on your mind, brother? Yes. I will explain later. Sigmund has been important to you for as long as I have known you. What happened in the beginning? Oh, it's a typical enough story. A boy meets girl. Girl fulfills her ambition to transcend the physical plane and become a Valkyrie of Valhalla. One day, Sigrid quietly arrived from Fjordland and began serving as Freya's handmaiden while she undertook training for the Sisterhood. I don't even think we were introduced. I just see her around the court. Of course, I've observed her loveliness impressive stature, but long before we fell to talking. But we seemed cut from different cloth, I suppose. It never occurred to me we'd get along as well as we did. Another 
Is it worth what it'll cost you? I wonder. When Freya was Queen in Asgard, the better times, I mean, there really began to be some culture around the place. Poets, musicians, the odd contortionist would pay visits, perform, mingle. On one occasion, I'd taken a seat expecting to see this balladeer of the lowlands, when Sigrun walked in. Somehow more stunning than I'd ever seen her. And when of all places she chose to sit next to me, well, a lot of very interesting things happened very quickly. But I may need to collect my thoughts while you get us killed again. <laughs> of Sigrun. She sat beside you. Yes, she chose to sit next to me. No big thing, really. Yet, somehow, despite myself, I felt a rush in my stomach like I was a green lad again. Embarrassing at the end of the day, to be so simple. Some remark, and I learned how it felt to make her laugh. And suddenly I felt more at ease. 
Almost eerily so. A calm within each other's storms, I suppose. They had a way of describing that. Peace dwells among us. Lovely, brother. That's exactly right. Right side, brother! one you needed. <laughs> Ready to move to the next space, brother? Should be clear. <laughs>
Vladimir. The day my family died was not the last time I saw Calliope. I had journeyed to the underworld to rescue Helios. When I arrived, I heard Calliope's song on the wind and found her in the fields of Elysium. It had been long since I felt such joy. But it was another trick of the guards. It wasn't her. Worse. It was. The goddess of the underworld wished to destroy all of creation. Elysium included. She knew that for me to stand against her meant leaving Calliope behind forever. So... I pushed my daughter away again. Oh, she cried and begged me not to. It's been not nearly long enough. walking around unkilled. Your shield, strike now! Ah, back your prized game. Coming time! <laughs> Thank you. 
yourself, man! Or, or... decision on my account. Oh! <laughs> 
Wait for it. Last time we were here, you told me you felt indifferent to shrouding your homeland in endless darkness. And you suggested there was something more to it. I did indeed, Kratos. Clear your mind as you fight. Let the truth come to life. <laughs> I yield. I yield. Good. 
then. I don't think you are indifferent, Kratos. I think you were hurt. Deeply hurt. And you handled it unskillfully. Wait, is that you restoring the sun? You took Helios's chariot and put the sun back in the sky, but sacrificed yourself in the process. Yes. I fell to my death and was saved by Helios. But this memory happened before I killed him. My evils were yet to come. What is the point? That your legacy has always been a complicated one. That goodness is not a destination we arrive at, but a practice. Misfortune may drive anyone to darkness. We resist it only through wisdom and vigilance. You are not so unskillful now as you were then. Better voices in your head, you might call it. I think that's enough for now. You have much to contemplate. Yes. Back to the beach, then. You should be proud of your progress, Kratos. See you soon. It seems like you're making progress, whatever you're doing in there. Perhaps. Listen, I... No, I made you feel like we expected more of you than you could give. And I just want you to know, I'm not asking you to change how you are or who you are. We had to break the old world to build a new one. Picking up the pieces and putting them together stronger. It's a rare opportunity. You made a difference here. In some circles, a symbol of change. On many days, just knowing that you're a part of the Council is enough. In other days? You've earned a voice. How you use it is up to you. My lady. General? Respects your focus, Kratos. Air. Use this. A mind that can adapt thrives amid chaos. Finding order within the storm. I'll tell you the next part of my story now, if you'll listen. Proceed. Last thing I told you was that I'd become an apprentice to a mage healer of renown. I learned much from her, not just about the healing arts, but about how to live a complete life. A whole life, true to yourself. She was like a mother to me, which made it all the more painful when she too fell ill. It was the same illness that had taken my father. But this time would be different. It was my chance to apply everything she taught me to try and save her. Anyway, I think that's a good place to pause my story. <clears throat> We did more things and more things to do. Check. Survival is second nature. Focus on your intention, Kratos. I know it's above board, but I like to think of this part as advising the local authorities. 